I would love to be that carefree person who goes to work, lives out of a backpack, and just wanders around the uptown area or like North Loop and just casually strolls in somewhere, works for a few hours, does everything on the go with a brand new iPad Pro and MacBook Pro. You know what I mean? It's the iconic Apple product video personality. Yeah, Tim Tim said the Mac Pro is coming in 2024. <gasps> what? <laughs> You heard it here first. Leaked info. But that's so soon. Yeah, that's so soon. (laughs) This is a Nexus special, episode 62, Apple October event 2018, on October 30th, 2018. And now, no more NSA, friends. This Nexus special is hosted by Brian Mitchell and Ryan Rampersad. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash ns62. Well, hello, Ryan. Hey, Brian. It's another Apple month. Another month, another Apple event. Definitely. Um, we got a lot of new hardware this month, um, or this fall, I guess. That's not I, not iPhone or Apple Watch related. Uh, what are you most excited about? What do you want to talk about first? Uh, well, I would love to talk about my uh, new friend. Uh, that's in my cart right now, waiting to be purchased. But I, I can't start with that one. I have to start um, with a different product first. Yeah, we let's go. We can go sequentially, and that I would think, be. I think the, we have to. Yeah, the new MacBook Air. The new MacBook Air. Who could have thought? This was, I think, something we were all kind of like. Are they just going to end that line because the MacBook Pro had that low end MacBook Pro that you know, didn't really match because it didn't have touch bar. Right. I'm curious. Are they still selling that now? Uh, let's go look. I'm checked. pretty sure they are because I would have read about it if they weren't. But you're right. Yep. So yeah, like, they do still sell it. The MacBook Air had not been updated um, except for the processor for many years. It was like three, maybe? At I least. Say. Yeah. But even, even before that, like the MacBook Air, it's very minor incre- incremental improvements. So I bought my MacBook Air in 2011. And the body itself had not changed until just now, so it's, it's well. A, they they did a minor update to give it MagSafe too. That's not I think a body it got change. A, don't, did don't, it get a little thinner? Don't or no? talk about that. Okay. Um. So yeah, they have a bunch of new new things. So yeah, the, the case redesign it looks a lot more like the 12 inch MacBook. Yeah, I think it looks pretty good. So um. You know, it's it's an entirely new computer. I mean, it's not like a MacBook Air at all, but it does keep the wedge shape. Yeah. So that's Which is kind of the iconic design from the first MacBook Air in 2008. Uh, and then another th- important thing to note here is that there is no there there aren't two sizes. There's no variation. It's just a 13-inch MacBook Air. I think that's for the best. It I mean, if there were a smaller one, it would compete directly with the MacBook, which is already really close for being a 12-inch and a 13-inch device yeah and i have some additional thoughts about that later that i can share so let's just just go through through uh some of the things that make this macbook air special so it has two ports two thunderbolt three ports two thunderbolt three ports which is great and they're the type c flavor of thunderbolt three ports that's good it has no touch bar but it does have touch id which is pretty cool so it's kind of like the macbook pro but without the touch bar um i believe that macbook pro also has two ports uh yes i believe so so that's an interesting parallel there um it also has a retina display yep and it comes in at uh i think 2560 by 1600 uh pixels which isn't quite four times the resolution of the old macbook air 13 inches which was 1440 by 900 even though they said it was four times larger technicalities apple yeah technicalities i guess so um and some something to note about this display too is it's not the p3 color gamut so it's not quite the high-end retina display that are in the macbook pros and imac pro or yeah Yeah. imac pro but it's it's still retina display and it has better color than the one it's replacing oh it has better everything than the one it's replacing like you know pixels (laughs) absolutely um so an interesting thing is that this is made from all recycled aluminum which is pretty cool um I yeah and that's a, a common theme throughout all the hardware they released today yeah um, i think they said it comes from 
a you know it's like waste product from making iPads or and iPads and iPhones. Yeah, yeah, so it's you know the shavings of gouging out the the cuts for the iPhones and the iPads, and they're using that instead to then. Um, you know, they're making a new alloy and melting it down to make the bodies for the MacBook Air and other devices. So there's there's at least eight iPads in every MacBook Air. <laughs> yep. Yes. So uh, this this product has um, some build to order options. the The primary option here, of course, is the RAM size. So it's it's eight gigabytes by, de- by default, and then you can configure up to sixteen. That's not really a surprise, but it's good they actually have this option. Um, I don't think the MacBook Airs, you know, in the configuration they had right before this, the 2017 version, um, even had a 16 gigabyte option. I think eight was the only option. So this is a, a good option to have. Um, most people won't be doing anything with memory intensive taxes on MacBook Airs, but it's good just to have. Yep. And it is still the LP DDR3 for the extra power efficiencies. Totally fine. Yep. probably cheaper they probably bought a ton of it and they're just going to reuse it absolutely uh it has the t2 chip because it has touch id that's good yeah and that allows for touch id um hey siri as well as um a bunch of extra oh hey f- my phone turned on hey <laughs> a bunch of extra uh security features like disabling the microphone when the lid is closed um that way the nsa boot. can't listen to you exactly no more no more nsa friends um yeah, secure boot and a you know a, a couple other things that the T two does. I mean, it's basically an embedded iPhone chip eight or something. It's like kind or of, yeah. seven. I think it's an A ten processor that's roughly making the T two. It's kind of ridiculous. So speaking of processors, this has an i five uh, dual core eighth gen Intel processor, which is pretty good. So it's not like a quad core or anything. Um, they could have done more here, but they're they're trying to keep battery life way up. And this is, you know, it's it's more than a MacBook, but it's less than a Pro. So I guess this is okay. Um, what do you what do you think about using that as the processor? Um, I it's I mean it's one point six gigahertz, a little slower clock speed. I think they need to do that to keep it in the the spaces that they have. Um, there are literally no CPU options, so you get that one point six gigahertz dual core. That's it. It does turbo boost up to 3.6, but uh, and it is an i5, so it fewer options there. But I think for an Air, it keeps the lines more simple, and it encourages you to get a MacBook Pro if you need more power. Yeah, and I think that's okay. Um, so I have some additional thoughts um, about how the MacBook in the MacBook Airs now exist in sort of an updated configuration. Um, but before I share my thoughts, do you have any thoughts about that? Um. I, not not too many. I'm not sure what uh, wattage chips these are. I heard some rumors that they could be the five watt chips, but I'm hoping they're at least the 15s. They've got to be 15s, right? Because they're i fives. Yeah, but that clock speed is is quite low. I heard they could have been the the Amber Lake uh, series, but I'm not sure. Yeah. So my thoughts on this are how odd that the MacBook and the MacBook Air are different things, and so from one perspective, like. Of course, they're different. They're one has one port and one has two ports, but but one the one has the one USB C and this has two Thunderbolt three. So right, and so like, like architecturally, they're very different too. And and just they're just confusing products, really. Like they shouldn't be two products. It, they should be just one product, um, and there should just be two sizes of what is called a MacBook Air. And so the pricing even makes less sense. So we should go over that, by the way. So the pricing of the MacBook. Is twelve ninety nine or fifteen ninety nine? The pricing of the new MacBook Air is eleven ninety nine or thirteen ninety nine. So the new MacBook Air is cheaper than the regular MacBook on both levels, both tiers. But it, it technically can do more because it has two ports, better processors, maybe a better screen. Although that's arguable. Um, so it's a weird product. So in yeah. some ways, to me, it feels yeah. like when you look at those technical differences and you think about it, so it's either a timing conflict. So like Apple thought, okay, we'll release this MacBook and then in th- a few years we'll release 
additional flavors of the MacBook, and we just won't call it an Air anymore. Or it was a market bet that just didn't pan out. So Apple thought, okay, well, everybody who needs a cheap laptop or an entry-level laptop will use the MacBook, and we don't need the Air line anymore. But then it keeps selling so well over and over and over. So it's it's a weird it's a weird position to be in, and I and I don't know how to read it. Yeah, it's I I'm yeah I was really hoping they're going to unify it today and update or get rid of one of these lines, but that didn't happen. I'm looking at the 12 inch MacBook and the more expensive uh, 1599 one comes with 512 gigabytes of solid state. That's more than the um, MacBook Air at the cheaper price or the more expensive prices because they're at 128 and 256 and this is 256 and 512. Right. It's um, it's a very confusing lineup. Yeah, and the the 12 inch MacBook comes with either an M3 or an i5. Right. But the i5 you can build to order to an i7. That's but they're so still confusing. all dual core and that like four and a half watt chip. So I don't know. And that's also like Intel line. Like an i7 is not an i7 if you don't know what you're looking at. Right, right. So, um, and I'll mention one more confusing part of this whole thing. So if you thought, oh, yeah, well, for sure, like these are new MacBook Airs, uh, the old ones are gone, well, you'd be wrong. Because if you scroll down on the buy page, the old 2017 MacBook Air is still available for nine ninety nine. Education. Education. You got it. That's right. Or or just people who just don't need, for whatever reason, to have eyes anymore. I mean, that's an option, too. Yeah. But look, the the graphics number is six thousand versus six seventeen. You know, that the that's old what, ones. That's what a, makes the difference. Hundred times better. It is a lot better. Um, so so I think I think overall, like the MacBook Air refresh here is super welcome. Um, I'm not in the market for a low level, you know, like an entry level MacBook. Um, at this time, at least. Yeah. Although I mean, I'm easily convinced, you know, I guess. Um. But you know you can think about all the people who go to college or or just to you know any any activity that doesn't need serious computing power, but you need to be able to to do some stuff. Um, although I don't know, like, but then people will argue with me when I say that. Oh, but there's this new thing called the iPad. Um, I don't know. It's 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 an interesting product market right now because there's so much competition with themselves. Yep, my sister needs to be. Or we'll be buying a new MacBook in the next couple of months here, and I'll probably point it to the MacBook Air, but I, I don't know. It gets expensive fast when you add more memory or storage. Yeah, for sure. You know, speaking of fast, uh, let's talk about the new Mac Mini. Yeah, uh, finally, it's been like what fifteen hundred days or something. I thought you were going to say fifteen hundred years. You I mean you might not be wrong? At least five years or <laughs> something close. Fifteen hundred, right? same good. thing. Yeah. 1500 years yeah so the new mac mini uh, allegedly it's five times faster than the old one according to apple marketing which means well, it's um faster which means the old it, there are there are years between the old and the new one uh it, and there were also generations of intel processors so the new processors um come in various configurations it, by default it comes with a four core i5 i don't know what the exact four SKU core is. i3 actually i'm oh, looking really? at the oh well i've only looked at the now. higher end model of course i mean you never get yeah. the base model and um, you can so you can upgrade the i3 one to an i from a quad core i3 to a six core i7 and the more expensive one starts at a six core i5 which you can also upgrade to a six core i7 oh do you have the pricing handy on that you should tell us what the pricing is for which the, both please yeah so the the stock configurations for the cheaper one is 799 and that comes with the quad core i3 8 gigs of ram intel uhd graphics 630 and 128 gigs of pci pcie ssd the more expensive one is uh 1099 which comes with a six core quad core i5 sorry that didn't make sense a six core i5 uh eight gigs of, of ddr4 and same graphics and 256 gig ssd great so two two solid but only one viable entry option um so the the thing that's interesting about this is these products these two mac minis are actually customizable way more than the macbook airs are so you can customize um to a better processor an i7 you can customize up to 64 gigabytes of ddr4 ram which is great 
it's like actually having a computer now um you can configure up to a two terabyte hard drive although you do have to pay um with at least one of your legs um, ssd there are no no spinning disks no spinning disks i mean this is a real computer um and you can also uh specify um 10 gigabit ethernet you know in case you run a server on your mac mini um yeah but i think one of the things that i want to point out is that a lot of the times we often think of mac computers that are desktop class having mobile chips so we'll often accuse mac or uh, iMacs of having wimpy mobile chips but in particular this mac mini doesn't suffer from that issue it has a regular desktop i7 8700 when you configure it that way so the max configuration for the processor and i think having an 8700 shows that apple understands where this particular component fits in to the larger ecosystem that they build so when they come out next year um at wwdc with the mac pro they'll be able to very easily show so this is the one thousand dollar mac mini this is the two thousand dollar mac mini and this is the base model mac pro at three thousand this is the five thousand mac pro and this is the ten thousand dollar mac pro i mean there'll be a, a huge umbrella there but they'll finally be able to have enough capability in the lineup to make it make sense yeah i i just think we haven't had a lot of like new desktop upgrades from apple I mean, we had the iMac I mean, pro and i think that iMac was... pro was exciting yeah but that's a little different class than the consumer level exactly you know, mac mini imac kind yep. of stuff exactly especially the i remember back in the the days of like when the when the i remember when the mac pro got the nehalem cpus you know in like 2008 or something um good old days you know, th- that was always fun to go through every time they upgraded the mac pro i'm like how expensive can i make it and you know i'd add all the support stuff and it'd be like fifty thousand dollars but um it's just kind of fun to to have new desktop hardware because i think they can more more affordably uh allow you to customize the components yeah and so this is this is a great change so going forward i think some important things about the mac mini is that will apple update this with any regularity and the answer might be yes more now than before because there's they know there's demand and they know that people are watching and and i and i think also that there's just in general um there's a little bit more renewed interest so brian and i talked about this in the fringe and you can listen to some of those thoughts if you'd like definitely um i think it's just it's just nice to see that they're refreshing the mac mini um finally. it does also yeah finally and it's like pretty decent too. You can get up to sixty four gigs of RAM, which is quite a lot for what used to be a a cheap convert to Mac from Windows kind of a computer. Um, it it has the T two chip, which we talked about for the MacBook Air, and it's also made with one hundred percent recycled aluminum. And it looks like the RAM is user replaceable. It might still be kind of locked with some software ish things to. Um, Apple, they're, they're, Apple's kind of locking down a little more on the hardware that you put in it, especially with the T2 chips of kind of doing a um, like a firmware check or device ID kind of checking. So you need to go to an authorized Apple service provider to be able to get their, their keys to sign any hardware changes. So do you think the um, Mac, uh, the, the Mac, new MacBook Air or the new Mac Mini, which one do you think uses more recycled aluminum to make? Um probably the macbook air probably i agree yeah it has you know front and back of well the the lid is like mostly one side the bottom case is two sides yeah kind of i mean the keyboard's there too so yeah the mac mini is probably a little thicker aluminum but it's a much smaller device too yeah i don't i just thought it was a funny thing to think about yeah well let's um you want to talk about the the new the newest new thing yeah the newest new thing uh, that would be the uh, 2018 iPad Pro, Woo-hoo! and this thing is gorgeous. It is totally new. I mean, everything you thought you knew about an iPad Pro or an iPad in general, it's gone. Yeah, it's this is a new form factor. They had a they have a great video where they're taking an existing iPad Pro and like using um, some VFX and things to like pop off the Touch ID button and expand the the screen out to fill the bezels so they're all the same bezels top and bottom and sides um and then they do things like they um you know swipe by the lightning connector and it turns into USB-C connector um i think that's about it 
but um yeah so the un- bezels are uniform there is no home button so no more touch id um uh, but they replaced it with face id so they had to, had to do some re-engineering to make the um that sensor array a little a little slimmer probably they elongated it i bet um it's two min- millimeters thinner than the previous models um, it does come with a camera bump and it looks like, I think that sensor is about what's in the iPhone 10, but it does do things like smart HDR. Um, the 10 and a half model is now an 11 inch model. Um, and the 12.9 inch is still at 12.9 inch. Um, so they made the case there just a touch smaller. Um, they're still selling the old 10.5 inch iPad pro. Um, and now the, uh, 11 inch doesn't have that four by three aspect ratio because they just, made the screen a little bit taller but that should be okay with the size classes and you know push apple's been doing for the last several years about making apps just fill the available space yeah if you if you weren't um you know cheating and having a fixed ratio you should be fine yep but i think one of the like, hardware aside which is awesome the the a12x chip is like ridiculous um it's uh uh i think my notes there are wrong it's i think apple said it's i wrote down 92 percent more powerful than 92 percent of laptops on the market that's what the, I, I don't know wait is 92 percent more powerful the right metric there no, no, no i think i think they said it was ni- more powerful than 92 percent of laptops oh so i had an extra 92 percent yeah yeah that makes sense yeah <laughs> um it's a thousand times better graphics performance than the first ipad um and I think Tim or someone else said um, the same graphics performance is the Xbox One X One S, but ninety four percent smaller. I mean, I think I, that's pretty cool. I think that's pretty cool. Um, and you could almost use it like that one day, maybe. Yeah, they showed some game demos, and that it's impressive. So remember, video games and me don't. I don't age when it comes to video game performance. I'm blown away at anything these days because I grew up with a PS2, and that's all I know. So, and the only computer games I play are Age of Empires, which is from 2005. I I love how Brian says he doesn't age relative to games. I think that's so interesting. So I'm, yeah, I look at any, anything in the last like 10 years. I'm like, wow, that's really good. (laughs) Especially the stuff in the last few years. Yeah. Just the lighting effects are so nice. Um, so yeah, no more touch ID. They have face ID. Um, it did lose the headphone jack. Um, they will sell you a $9 USB-C to headphone adapter. USB-C? Yeah. How come? Uh, because there's a USB-C port on the bottom. What? No way. And it supports uh, USB 3.1 generation 2, which is the 10 gigabit per second um, connector. Wait, so you're telling me Apple isn't going to sell a proprietary port on their product now? Nope, not anymore. What? Yeah, I I wonder if this, how much time they're going to let go by before they update all of the iPhones. Um, One of course, year. everyone's going to complain about it, but I bet it'll be next fall. So, how, do you know um, what year they changed over to um, Lightning? It was with the iPhone 5 in 2012. Okay, so that would be like enough years at, this, at next year. That's seven years. That's enough um, years, yeah, right? Yeah, will have we will have been on Lightning longer than we were on thirty pin for right. the uh, iPhones. At least. I feel like it might be a fair trade at that point. Yep, I would agree. Um, and so uh, with that USB C port, they um, now have external display support, so you can plug in up to a five K display on this thing, um, and just drive it from your iPad. Um, they showed at least a demo with iMovie. And I didn't call it out, but it looked like the screen was showing something different on the external display than it was on the iPad. I don't know how the, um, you know, the interactions on your iPad will be reflected on the screen if you can't touch the screen, because as we all know, iPads are very touch based. So how will that work? I you think know, we'll have to see it depend- what apps do. It depends on what you saw. But like, for example, with with a movie editor, you could have the the movie preview, like the So not the real, but where the movie is being temporarily rendered over on the external screen. And you could have the real full screen on the iPad. There might be some things you can custom code for that situation. 
Yeah, well, and I think that'd be a really useful case where you have yep. a much larger timeline, and then the preview is just on the external display, and you can show other metadata. Exactly. And then, you know, maybe there's a swap screen button or something that yep. you can do if you need to do some finer interaction with something in the preview window. Yep. But we'll definitely have to see. Um, and that USB-C port can now, you can plug your camera directly into it, and you can even charge your iPhone from your iPad Pro. That's pretty fun. That is pretty cool. Um, I mean, isn't it amazing that Apple has made such a stride with the iPad? Um, and it feels like the strides with the iPad have really been in the last three years. Like, once once they started making these Pro models. Yeah, they re- that really pushed through. And I think that's pr- probably because they, they increased the prices with the Pros. Yes. But it allows them to do so much more with just a couple hundred or several hundred more dollars. Um, and And I think that's... Um, really benefiting the iPad line. You know, the original iPad was $500 and there were just a few different prices for storage. But when they did say, okay, we're going to make a a better and a lower end model because, you know, it fits the different types of users um, a lot better. So, you know, education and high school students who don't need that much can use the cheaper one. And, you know, for people who don't have as much money and things, but the professionals who want to do you know, their life's work on a tablet can spend a bit more and have a much better experience. Yep. And I think that's, that's pretty fair. So the, 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 one of the classic things that Apple likes to do is having that pricing umbrella, right? And now the iPads have this amazing pricing umbrella. Um, I, I had the page open earlier and I'll never be able to find it right now, except I just found it. Um, <laughs> but basically, you know, there's, there's, there's a model at almost every price point, nine ninety nine. uh, Seven ninety nine, six forty nine, three ninety nine, and three twenty nine. That's a model at every price point. I mean, it's amazing. Um, yeah, there's it's it's very rare for Apple to have such a. Not all of those products are new, to be fair, but it's it it has been rare for Apple to always have such a consistent umbrella, um, in a product line. Yeah. And this iPad Pro, you can configure it to up to a terabyte of storage. That's sick. I I, I really want to hear from someone who uses a terabyte of storage on their iPad. Well, I wonder, is it people doing complex photo editing? So where, maybe maybe you have your or, iPhone uh, XS Max, and you, you're shooting 4K video on it, and you don't want to edit on the iPhone because it's way too tiny, and so you take it to your iPad instead, but you need to have a terabyte to have some scratch space. Yeah, I think, you know, that's that's got to be it. Doing Ironically, video work, you have to use or, your Lightning to USB-C dongle to transfer the file. Well, unless you pay for that, like, terabyte or two of iCloud storage and then let it up and then it'll take weeks to upload all that <laughs> to iCloud. Yeah, it'll take weeks, all right. Yeah. Yeah, and so there's, there's an, also another interesting change about this. So there's a new Pencil. Yeah, Apple Pencil 2. Um, and it uh, charges... Not through lightning these days, but through a magnet and some, you know, like uh, proximity-based charging like the Apple Watch or no, what is that, coil-based kind of thing. Yeah, so um, I was really surprised by this. I expected either for it to have like a, I don't know, like a female and USB-C port so that you could charge it with just a USB-C cable. Um, or alternatively, they would have come out with a single coil um, air power mat just for this thing kind of like the watch um and so this makes way more sense to have it just stick to the ipad and then charge from it i like think that, this is a much better experience that, and they have the magnets on all the sides so you can just kind of clip the pencil wherever that makes so much um, sense um oh, and of course um yeah. a ton of products do that these days so the the um Microsoft services, those come with um, a pencil and those stick to the side. They don't stick to every side until next year uh, when they copy Apple. But eventually, I mean, it makes it just makes sense. I think the Pixel Book or the new Pixel comes with a pen and it sticks to the side. Sticking it to the side, not to the man, makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah. It's just like a, the seamless experience that you want. And the iPad is like a large is a large enough device that... It has such a huge battery, you can charge a small device and a small accessory easily with no concern. Or even your iPad. Or, sorry, your iPhone. Your iPhone. Again, of course, you'll need the USB-C to Lightning cable, ironically. Until next year. Sold separately. <laughs> um, so one thing I'll mention about the battery, since you did mention it, um, 
it did get a little bit smaller. So in the big model, it's um, about 12% smaller. And then in the small model, it's about 3% smaller. So watch hmm. out for batteries. Yeah, that to, must be because uh, the 12.9 inch did get smaller. To be honest, I don't think you're going to notice the battery difference. The iPad battery lasts so long in standby that an hour of difference or three hours of difference probably won't matter. Um, and I doubt you were using your iPad for high intensity work off of power for so long. Otherwise, uh, I don't think it's a big deal. Yep. Um, the new iPads have 102 magnets in them. So they're just kind of like they're everywhere. So your, your cases and covers can just use a magnet connection on, on the back and not have to like be in a case. I want to try to stick it to the fridge. I'm sure you could. Like that would yeah. be so cool if I and could then just, just like adhere glue my a iPad. tiny shelf underneath so it doesn't slide all the way down, and then there you, ha- you have a smart fridge. That see, that's all I want. I mean, that, I would pay for that. Although I don't know how I would keep it charged, but just have a, a wire coming out from a back. Well, that's not very useful then. Yeah. Uh, um, and finally, guess what? What? It's made out of 100 percent Johnny Ives approved recycled aluminium. When they first announced that, the crowd was more excited than I've ever heard any crowd in an Apple event. They were hooting and hollering and cheering, and I think Tim Cook really he made some comment about it. Well, I think it's, it's you know it's, the New York the New York scene. It's just it's just funny because you know if you say that, then then everybody else just looks bad, and it's just a nice thing to be able to say. Yeah, definitely. Um. You know, with the removal of the headphone jack, I I did see some controversy on Twitter about, you know, if you need to use audio out, you can't charge the device at the same time. You know what? Uh, Too bad. But they did highlight like the DJ that DJ Pro app. If you are in a in a small system, you're doing audio out directly from your iPad to play it. You know, if you don't pre think about charging your iPad before, and if that's a really graphically intense application. You might be running it for four hours. That might drain the battery most of the way down. And I think that could be a problem. I just wish Apple would have some sort of solution for this. Um, right. So I, 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 I agree. It should They should have a better first-party solution and not the little, you know, uh, dongle that splits into three different, uh, you know, ports at the end. Yeah. Um, I agree. But on the other hand just just move on yeah and it's it okay. is USB-C, so i'm sure some company will make something out there and it will work fine i'm sure it won't work fine but i i like your enthusiasm it might it might work it it might was work. it would have been designed to work it, yeah <laughs> um i i and, and a reasonable alternative also is that depending on what you're working on you can use bluetooth headphones just like everybody else um, but you even mentioned like audio out for actual DGA work, but even that could use Bluetooth in theory. I mean, when you're at a club and you're listening to music from your iPad, cause I, I don't know anything about clubs, so don't quote me on this. Does it really matter if you have, uh, 128 kilobits per second or 256? I, I'm going to guess not. I would say in a live event, that's where it matters most. I'm going to guess people can't hear that well at a live event when the volume from the speakers are miscalibrated anyway. Yeah, but when you're when you're playing such a loud space, um, especially if you're lowering your bit rate, um, a lot of the frequencies will start to um, just sound distorted and bad, just because it is pushed so loud to the limit that you you hear and feel the differences. I am um, sure normal people won't notice, so I well, think it's okay. Audio engineers would notice for sure. Audio engineers shouldn't be using an iPad to do their DJ work. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens. But this is a um, huge step in the right direction. Yeah. Either way. Oh, absolutely. These, yeah. Awesome iPad Pros. I'm c- debating buying one, but I won't. I will uh, buy one later when I can get one on sale. Let me know. I want to check it out. Yep. Um, a, a Easter egg released today that wasn't mentioned in the keynote is that the new MacBook Pros are now available with the uh, Vega M discrete GPUs on November 14th. Whoa. Yay, discrete GPUs. I don't think they've had them for a while now. Well, so the MacBook Pros do come with a Radeon Pro something or another. Oh, that's right. Uh, but these are the Vega line, and these are good. Like, really good, I- I've heard. So I guess These that's... are, like, it's the... I think it's the first time the Vega 
the Vega line has been shrunk to mobile because well, these are the ones that are used in the iMac Pro. I don't I don't know if it's the first time for a laptop, but it's the first time for Apple. Apple says the first discrete mobile Vega GPUs in a notebook. I don't know if I believe them. Hmm. Well, they're near the first, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, they say up to 60% faster than the Radeon Pro 560X. That's so. good. That, that's good. I wonder if they're going to change the pricing at all. I hope they keep it the same. I'm sh- No, I think... Uh, I, I bet you they're going to... Um, they're going to increase the price for sure. No, they can't do it. We'll see. They I, you can't buy them yet, so one day. They don't they don't have them listed. Um So what did you miss here at today's event? What were you looking for that they didn't have? I was really counting on a new iMac today. Um as you listener might be aware, my Hackintosh kind of bit the bullet at the end of September, like the day after I got my iPhone. Um, so I've been using my 2012 15 inch MacBook pro for the last month or so. Um, it's fine. The battery is bad. I mostly use it at my desk. It's a little sluggish. I want just a, I want a larger screen. I want the 5k display. I want modern features on a Mac and I want it to be snappy. And that's something that really it's perfect for an iMac. I just want something stable and reliable from Apple. I was trying to convince Brian for 45 minutes on the fringe to buy a Mac mini. So, you know, we could be surprised next week and Brian could have a Mac Mini. Yeah, if 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 you're buying me one, that's that's how it would happen. Huh? Is that, huh? Is that all it takes? Sure. Okay. We'll I have see. a screen. I have mice and keyboards. <laughs> that's what I said. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping for uh, Face ID on the iMac. I think that'd yeah. be nice. We'll see if Apple brings it to the desktop line or to the Mac line. Um you know, it definitely needs a, a T processor in it. Yep. Um, I wonder if that would be a T3 because Face ID is only in the A11 and newer, and I think the T2 is an A10. Um, so uh, what what's in? So is a T2 in the iMac Pro? Is that right? T2 is in the iMac Pro, MacBook Pro, Mac Mini, and MacBook Air. Yeah. So I, I would expect it to get to either the MacBook Air, I, I mean MacBook Pro of next year. I would expect it their first... Um, it seems like that's a good place for having a face unlock feature versus a stationary computer initially. So I don't know. We'll see. I think it's happening though. I think it'll happen for sure. Yeah. Um, also with the IMAX, it's been the same design for many years now. The bezels on that IMAX are like, huge. they're ridiculous. Yeah. They're huge. Could, can you, and um, so I think, can you imagine having bezels on my iMac just like the, the Mac, uh, I mean the iPad pro here. Oh, it'd be amazing. Oh, it'd, it'd be, be like beautiful. a cinema display, but or the LED Thunderbolt display. Yeah. But even smaller. Yeah. Oh, I would love that. That would be my dream iMac. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. I bet you they're just redesigning the case and stuff, and yep. it's taking longer. I bet at one point it was probably supposed to be in this, but maybe not. Also, the ninth generation Intel CPUs are out. Maybe they're um, not quite out enough yet to be in the new iMac. I would expect that. Or Apple's that. waiting for a full line of ninth gen chips. yeah i expect that to be the case i uh, those just came out in the last month and these these computers that were just released here probably had three months of manufacturing lead time so uh i would expect that to be a supply uh supply chain constraint yep uh and then one final bit uh ios 12.1 watch os 5.1 audio os 5.1 tv os 12.1 and mac os 10.14.1 uh were released today i have a question uh, with yeah what's audio os that runs on the HomePod. Oh my gosh! I was about to ask, "What's a HomePod?" <laughs> I know what that is. Don't worry. Also, fun fact: the T2 runs BridgeOS three. What? Okay. Uh, the T1 runs, I think, either BridgeOS one, one point one, or two, based on which model you have. I don't know if Apple has been updating them. I follow a couple of people on Twitter who are poking around with that firmware. I am positive all of these OSs are fake. It's all just Mac OS. Yeah, pretty much. Um, but those software updates bring 70 new emoji, group FaceTime, bug fixes, and eSIM or dual SIM support for the iPhones. At Fancy. Least. But uh, watchOS 5.1 was pulled due to stability and crashing things, so uh, I don't have that. I won't be downloading it until it's re-released. Hey, it's just like Windows builds. It's no big deal. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I uh, I installed 
uh, iOS 10 or 12.1 within an hour of it being released, and I installed macOS 10.14.1 within two hours of it being released, and no issues there. Cool. Cool. Any final thoughts? You know, I think this was a great event. Um, As you said earlier, we've been really lucky this year for events. We had a pretty good WWDC, like nothing groundbreaking, nothing earth-shattering, but good software updates throughout OS X and iOS. It is OS X. I guarantee it. Um, Sure. The the, (laughs) the iPhone is great again, and the second iPhone, the XR, is good again. Um, these three products here, the MacBook Air, the Mac Mini, and the new iPads, also great. Um, almost all of the flagship products that Apple likes to sell are good again. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward. Yeah, it's been, it's been a great year. I think that MacBook Pro refresh was particularly good. I'm, I'm, the MacBook Air, nothing's like super surprising about it, but it's just a solid refresh. The Mac Mini, I was, it's exceeded my expectations, for sure, and the iPad Pro is just wonderful. Yep. Um, and of course, I think the iPhones are good this year too. Um, I, I bought one that Watch OS or what Apple Watch Series Four is is really nice. Um, I think next year, hopefully in the spring, they'll update the MacBook iMac, and maybe we'll hear something about the Mac Pro at some point next year. Yeah, I would expect and, a new MacBook Pro design sometime. I don't know when that would be. It could be. Um... I don't know, it could just be next fall, really. There's no reason to go crazy at this time, but I do expect a new new design eventually. Um, so I think that's pretty much it. Um, where can we find you on the internet? Well, you can find me on Twitter at Brian Mitch L, uh, or my website, brianm.me. I just published a review of the iPhone XX Mass. Uh, wow. Yep. 10S Max. <laughs> it's impossible um, to say. It's impossible to say. Yep. Um, so you can check me out there. Uh, what about you, Ryan? Well, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on Twitter at Ryan Mar, and of course on my website, RyanRampersed dot com. Nice. Uh, this episode is released under a Creative Commons license, so feel free to use it whenever. But it's also with attribution, so give us some credit. That's right. And of course, you can find us on Reddit at our subreddit uh reddit.com slash r slash the nexus tv and if you like to support cool things and hopefully we are cool you can support us on patreon.com slash the nexus tv all right and with that i think we're good so have a good one have a good one The Nexus, the Nexus, the Nexus TV podcasts from, from the, the technological, technological convergence. convergence.